Well, so I'll kind of, um, so we'll go ahead and do the practice and I'll give a little bit more guidance as we go. So don't, so don't think you're, you're not gonna be on your own here. I'll reiterate the instructions. So, um, but before we start the formal meditation, let's do a pre-meditation where we envision how the meditation will go. So, okay, just straighten up, place the crown of the head up towards the ceiling. And then now think about yourself meditating. And you see yourself meditating. And you're seated in this open, friendly awareness. And there's room, plenty of space and room for everything. There's space for your thoughts, for the body to have its pains, etc. And you're just noticing all the spaciousness and ease. And then you're going to be going along with the practice and then you're going to have a thought. Maybe there's desire or aversion there. And so you say to yourself, oh, things should be different. And we're saying that like gently, super gently. We're not even trying to get rid of the shoulds. We're just trying to examine them and let, their, let them do their thing. So it's like, oh, okay, there's a should here. All right, no problem. But then you notice that as you hold your attention on it, the object disappears. Then you're sitting there and another desire arises or maybe some aversion. And then you notice how that arises out of awareness, is made of awareness and recedes back into awareness. And on top of that, you do your inquiry. You just reflect, aha, the mind is thinking that things should be different. Okay, sweet, no problem. And then maybe stories are coming up. And then you say, is that true? Can I really know that's true? And you're not saying that to get rid of anything or to change anything. You're saying it as a angle of inquiry, an angle of study. And then you also keep noticing how everything that you think is true arises up out of awareness, made of awareness, and recedes back into awareness. And then maybe you get distracted, you do some mind wandering, you catch yourself, you bring it back, no problem. And then you know you have a good sense of accomplishment. And then this goes on for a while and you have a great sense of accomplishment. You feel like you can really do this practice of sitting in open awareness, inquiring with different techniques into your experience. And then you see this, this ability and also the fruit of the practice. You see it affect your day tomorrow, your week, next week, your year, next year, and all throughout your life. Okay, good. So then that ends the pre-meditation. Okay, good. So now we'll, we'll do our regular thing. We'll do chanting, breath work, then like a quick tour of the senses, and then the main practice. So all right, um, let's inhale the hands to heart center. Oh. Inhale deeply. Oh. Inhale deeply. Oh. Okay, now we're going to inhale the hands up. Retain the breath, bring the arms out to the side. Exhale, hands are folding together. OK, 
Okay, inhale again. Retain the breath, bring the arms out to the side. Exhale, folding the hands towards each other. And also notice how all of this is happening inside of awareness. Okay, inhale, the hands up. Retain the breath. Exhale, and the hands are moving slowly, which induces mindfulness. It's like they're moving through syrup. Okay, all right, inhale the hands up again. Pivot the torso over to your right. Bring the arms down, look over your right shoulder. Exhale, coming to, back to center. Inhale the hands up, pivot the torso over to the left, bring the arms down, look over the left shoulder. Exhale, coming back to center. Straightening up, pushing the crown up towards the sky. Now we'll take a quick tour of the senses as usual. So opening up the eyes. And now watch the mind make objects out of the experience of sight. And see if you can let that go. So do you notice how you see things and you can either just kind of interface with them and like a kind of more so raw sensory data way or a more kind of conceptual like, oh, that's a thing, that's a keyboard. See if you can just remain in this experience of seeing as such. Now close the eyes. And bring attention to the internal visual experience. Then notice how it's all happening. And now also see if you can, in a sense, relax the gaze with which you look at the internal visual object. Like let them blur into each other. Where it's not so much distinct thoughts that mean this or that, but rather it's just sensory data. And it's all just taking care of itself. Now bring your attention to hearing, and then see if you can hear the boats in a distant harbor blow their fog horns. So listen very attentively. To listen for a sound that can't be heard. That really makes you go really broad and expansive, boundless. And now bring that same quality of hearing to internal sound, internal talk. Where you're listening attentively, but there's so much space. And maybe if you 
listen hard enough, you can hear other people's thoughts. Then let that go. Take a deep breath and feel the whole body all at once. Exhale, feeling the whole body all at once. Now feel the feet, the legs, and the hips all at once. And in that same way, see if we can kind of take a different view on it all. See if you can hone into the actual sensory kind of feeling experience of it. Like maybe tingling in your legs. See. And then see if you can now tune in to the proprioception. Like the sense of knowing where this is and in space. And to be clear, that's just another sensory experience. And now bring to mind an image thought of your feet, legs, and hips. And notice how all three are different. They kind of can all glom together and make things seem very real. But when they spread out and disassociate, they kind of seem a little dreamlike. And that's just interesting. Now bring your attention to the abdomen of rising and falling. And then notice how all that's taking care of itself. Now bring your attention to your chest. Noticing the rising and falling, expansion, contraction. And now see if you can feel the chest rise and fall. See if you can distinguish that between the thought, the visual thought of the chest and also the proprioception of the chest. And now bring your attention to the shoulders. And if there's tension there, don't try to get rid of it. Just try to study it. Now bring your attention to your arms and hands. Now to your neck, face, and head. And 
you can kind of notice all the processes of what that entails of placing your attention there. There's sensory experience, kind of more just like a feeling. It might be some itchiness or something like that. And there's this perception. And then there's an image thought, likely as well. And just because we're here and just because we can, let's see if we can find the self. Often we think it's located in the head. And then let loose of that and see if you can place the self over in the right corner of the room, watching your body. And now have the notion of self expand stand out infinitely. So big that it pops. And that all of sensory experience just rests. Good. Now we'll come into the primary practice. We'll meditate like this for the next 15 minutes. You can just maintain this open, friendly awareness. And then if objects come up, inquiring, is that true? Can I really know that's true? Or alternatively, inquiring, oh, things should be different. These are just different lenses through which to kind of examine our experience. And just to reiterate, we're not trying to get rid of anything or really do anything. We're just here to kind of sweetly and lightly study our experience.
when the mind wanders, we just recognize that and just gently bring it back. Again, just letting everything be opening up this unconditional friendliness and receptivity. That also includes a receptivity and friendliness towards aversion and desire. 
everyone.
we go. So start letting that go. And look at the quality of the mind itself. Take note of the open, receptive, boundlessness. Okay, good. So may this practice work through us in such a way that others benefit as well. Okay, how'd that go? It felt very good. I don't know if I was doing it correctly, but I... It was very enjoyable to me. And at the end, my mind felt to me kind of soft. Good report. Um, that was a really cool meditation. Everything that came up was kind of like, oh, how do I really know that? And it yeah. everything started like falling apart. Yeah. And, and um, it felt kind of like um, emptiness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that one uh, like a, one quick way to get there? I, I think so. Yeah, I think that there's a kind of, this is a more empty, emptiness type oriented meditation. Uh huh. Cool. Yeah, everything was like, how do I know my head is above my feet? Yeah. You know, like it was really. Um, just like looking at really basic truths, it was yeah. really, I enjoyed being confused and it let yeah. me relax, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's like relaxing the conceptual mind. And, and again, again, where people get confused is like, they'll over apply it. Nope, you know, like during the day, you're gonna answer to your name, you're gonna talk about things, blah, blah, blah. But then there's this other perspective where you can see how kind of all of it is just made out of ether. Um, I, I did the, um, you know, the should um, mm -hmm. s statement, and uh -huh. uh, I really liked it because I started understanding, like, how addicted I am yeah. to, like, a, you know, I guess attached, like how attached I am and, um, you know, to like almost anything that's coming up. I have like an idea of how it should be. And so um, to me, it was almost like an aspect of um, purifying. Yeah. Like, or just, you know, liberate, like liberating that, that way of thinking. And at the end, yeah, same thing. Um, just totally expansive. And yeah, uh, yeah it was awesome. Uh -huh, cool. Well, I'm glad it worked out for you, Colin. Yeah, um, Colin, there's something coming up. Hold up. It's like, you know, I, it, it's kind of interesting to contemplate, like, which side of this thing am I? And when you really look at that question, like, the question's absurd. Um, and, and that's kind of what you keep also seeing in these, with these inquiries. And then the inquiry itself is absurd, right? But you have to concentrate your mind, hold, the object, and then phew, it turns into nothing. And then for the first time, you can see like, oh, I don't have to be on some sort of side of, on this. Or, okay, well, and then there are these shoulds, but I don't have to always have them. And they don't have to lead me around like, a, like you know, like, a, like, you know, where you, you know, with like, like leading around by the nose, you know? Anyway. I don't think I follow the instructions very well, but um, okay. my experience was that I had 
a lot of compulsiveness and uh -huh. and uh, making plans. Yeah. Um, and it's quite annoying sometimes how much energy oh, yeah. in the body. Oh yeah. And how how distracting it can feel. Right. You know that's an insight, right? And I just kept on sitting. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Didn't feel close. I actually, uh, I felt a distinct lack of openness. Uh -huh. I noticed it as soon as you said openness. And I realized how close my head uh -huh. felt. The pressure in my head and my, my eyelids felt very heavy or something. I don't know why, but yeah, I felt distinctly sort of shut somehow. Uh -huh. yeah. It was not happy. I mean, not like unhappy, but not. Sure. Yeah. Well, right, and there's room for that too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look at our chair. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so here's a note. So. Um, okay, so Cedric, because there was a lot of warm up and several ways of doing the don't know mind practice would it be possible to get written instructions as well um, to take for the week's practice so let me just speak to that so sit in open friendly awareness that's that's one two ask can i know this do i know this and then the other is just look at just look at desire and, and to be clear maybe what i would recommend is just do one sit where you just do the like looking at the true knowing or not knowing like can i really know this and then do another sit where you only where again default is open friendly awareness and then if anything arises you just say oh uh, uh rather especially desire look for desire and aversion it's like oh things should be different because that's what that thought means and things should be different if you really like look at that statement it's complete insanity it's just full craziness um, and so, but if, but if you kind of keep applying it to all your thoughts, you see how like you're hallucinating all this like suffering. It's like, oh shit, uh, this should be different, blah, blah, blah. And, and again, it's not, it's not entirely the, the idea that things should, it's not okay that you would want things to be different. Of course you do. But we see how we suffer extra in the, in the tight grip on that view. So again, open friendly awareness, do a sit where it's, can I know that's true? Can I really know that's true? The next one is, oh, uh, things should be different and just inquire into that. That's all. Very straightforward. Okay. Um, I just have a quick thought. Something that just kind of popped into my head is um, like, what if I replaced things should be different with things can be different? Like that just feels a little less judgmental and a little more open in terms of possibility. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Try investigating that. Yeah. But then also don't like definitely if okay so if if things should be different if that sounds judgmental uh, it would actually be i think interesting to look at that because it, it shouldn't be it's just like oh look here here i am wanting something different and and just like kind of almost be gentle with that but at the same time not don't entirely believe it either so it's kind of like this middle middle place but also if you want to try that other inquiry that'd be fine and then i should say i get that um is this true can and can I really know this is true? I get that from Byron Katie to work. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Or the work of Byron Katie. Yeah, anyway. All righty. Um, anything else pressing for people? Uh, just a quick question, Cedric. Sure. So, uh, do we have to keep bringing up thoughts or images that's triggering? Because after, after a while of uh, asking this, thoughts stop popping up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, that's not, should be different, should be different it doesn't hit anything because there, there's nothing coming up right um so I, I think i would play around with it um i think ultimately it'll just start thinning out and you'll just be sitting in open awareness and then you know then a thought will come up and you're like oh blah 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 you apply your inquiry um so i would play around with forcing the question forcing the inquiry and then totally dropping the inquiry both both will be fine okay yep thank you yep good question all right, cool. If any other questions are coming up, they can kind of be formulating now. And then let me reiterate uh, homework. 45 minutes of sitting, 
in open friendly awareness and then play around with these inquiries. Um, and then just keep, now, but this is quite important, apply these micro hits of, oh, here I am thinking things should be different in your daily life. Um, and also try applying this, is that true? Can I really know it's true in daily life when you really find yourself caught? And then also I think, go, I generally recommend these six acts of generosity a day. So really it kind of opens up the heart and, and is a good antidepressant. Okay, that's all I got. Anybody else, anything? Okay, I think not. So, okay, cool. Next week is the last, uh, last class. I think I might end up changing it. I'm, uh, right now we have this contemplation of death meditation. Uh, I'm thinking about changing it and doing something else, but we'll play it by ear. So I'll let y'all know. Um, <laughs> um, hey, good seeing all of y'all. Uh, it's a pleasure as always. So 